glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, as we get into the ministry of your word, we ask you to do what only you can do. Let your spirit touch, heal, and deliver. Cause a shaking, cause an awakening. Let the word of God quicken every part of our lives today. To the glory and to the honor of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring me my tools of the trade. I just need this. Tools of the trade and bring me the rest. I want to talk to you from a topic titled The Anointing that breaks the yoke. The anointing that breaks the yoke. Because a lot of Christians live a life of victory one day, you're winning today but losing tomorrow. And I declare to you that after this sermon, you shall walk into your days of divine victory. Your losing days are over. Every person who is in this building has been given something to do that shows who God is. Everybody. God never makes useless people. God never creates anything that is not fit for the master's use. It doesn't matter what situation you're in or where you find yourself today. There is a divine purpose and a divine calling of God that is on the inside of you. But for you to walk into God's divine purpose, there are some things that have to be broken off you. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Do you see that church? He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus has lived 30 years of his life and he comes into the temple one day after praying and fasting and going through temptation. And now he decides it's time for me to walk in to my calling. It's time for me to become who I've always intended to be. And the first statement that he declares is the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Somebody shout anointed. Anointed. And then he begins by saying, I have been anointed to do certain things. So it's not enough to just know you're anointed. You must know why you have been anointed. We have a lot of people who've been prayed on and prayed on and prayed on and prayed over and prayed over and prayed over, but they still do not know why they are here. As long as the breath of God is still in you on this side of the earth, there is still a divine purpose and a divine calling on your life. There is still something that you have to do on this earth. 
So Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus did not even begin by saying his anointing came to bring healing. He said his anointing came to preach the gospel to get rid of poverty. To get rid of poverty. Spiritual poverty, physical poverty, get rid of poverty. So my brothers and sisters, we cannot profess that we love God so much and God loves us enough to heal us from sickness, but he doesn't love us enough to pay our bill. God loves you enough to give you peace of mind, but he doesn't love you enough to give you peace at your job. To preach the gospel to the poor. I believe that I'm amongst a generation today that if God gave you an anointing that breaks the yoke of poverty over your life, you will do more for God than you have ever done. I genuinely believe that there are people in this house today that if God increased your finances, you will do more for the kingdom of God. You're not going to heap it up for yourself. You're not going to go and build yourself a little treasure. No, no, no. You will build the house of God. You'll increase the kingdom of God. You will touch more lives as God increases you. We have to get to that point where we realize that being anointed does not mean you have to be poor. Man, there's a time that we as a family got to this realization, my family, the Karaoke family. We loved God. We used to go to prayer meetings. We used to knock on heaven's doors. We used to go to the mountains and pray and seek God. But when you come home, you have no food to eat. When you come home, the, the auctioneers and the, and the bill collectors are coming to get theirs. And when they are done with taking and taking and taking, you look at what you have left and you're worse off than when you began. And we had to get to a point where we say, no, this is not the covenant of God. This is not the promise of God. The Bible says I'm a lender, not a borrower. The Bible says I will lend to many and borrow from none. The same anointing that it takes you to shout in the house is the same anointing that it takes to make you wealthy. How many more books would we write if we didn't have to spend our whole day at a job that is taking us nowhere? How many more souls would be saved if you had enough money to cover your family, take care of everything, and spend your day serving the kingdom of God? My God, how much more would this church do if we weren't worried about make this and pay this and balance this off and do this? I've seen it, church. I've seen it. I've lived in it. I've, I've seen how it feels to live in ministry without any debt. At the end of the month, no one is calling. And every dollar that comes in is for winning souls and touching lives and taking nations for the glory of God. We own the land. We own the building. We own everything. How much more would your business advance if this anointing would manifest itself in your life? This is mature Christianity, y'all. And this is, a, the hour is urgent. There is an urgency for believers to align themselves with God's supernatural provision, man. How many more things would you do for God? If just this one thing changed. So, I asked you this last Sunday. 
Can you have too much healing? No. Nobody can say I'm too healed. Can you have too much joy? Only your haters think you can't have too much joy. That's when they tell you you're doing the most. But if you can't have too much healing, you can't have too much joy, why do we think when it comes to prosperity and God's divine plan for us to prosper that it's too much? I'm just crazy enough to believe the scriptures that say we shall live in houses we did not build. I'm just crazy enough to believe that if God increases your income this time, next year triples your income, your giving will also triple. I'm just crazy enough to believe that there are men and women who are going to be faithful. The problem with us is we don't tithe at $100, so God keeps us at that level because he cannot increase you to a level you can't handle. So... Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To the poor. Spiritually poor and physically poor. That there has to come a shift in our lives. That shows us that poverty is a spiritual problem. Don't ever, lie, don't ever believe the lie that you're poor because you were born in the hood. The reason why poverty is in the hood is because it's a spiritual problem. It's a spiritual problem. How many people do you see win the lottery? Win millions. And look them up 10 years from now, they're as broke as Satan's toenails. Broke. Because it's a spirit. Poverty is a spirit. It's a spiritual problem. And the solution to a spiritual problem is an anointing. Someone thinks that you need a new job. Your problem is not new job. Because God is your source. I said God is your source. Your problem is not the job. Your problem is aligning with the anointing that's in your life. The moment the anointing that's in your life begins to manifest, church, you will walk into a supernatural place of supernatural provision. All right. The anointing that breaks the yoke. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Do you see that? Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Where is my... I had someone help me demonstrate in the first service. Brother Balao, come, come, come. I can call you out. You know, help me preach today. Put your hands together for Brother Balao. Isaiah chapter 10, come on up here. Verse 27. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. Do you see that word day? Underline the word day. I'll tell you what the word day means to you, church. A lot of people think that God will take a lifetime to bring you out of the situation that you're in. And that is a lie from the devil. And I want to ask you this example. How many of you know you can lose everything in one day? Something can happen and you lose everything in one day. So if you believe the devil can destroy everything in one day, why don't we believe that God can establish everything in one day? It won't take a lifetime for God to change your life. It's any day, any hour, any minute, any second, and the anointing of God is activated and brings a divine shift. Yeah. 
into your life. It won't take too long. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be what? Destroyed. In Israel, when you're going to be an oak, ox today or a farm animal, when you wanted to take an animal to farm, what you did was train it on the yoke. So they would begin with a small yoke and put it around the neck to train the animal. And as the yoke, as the animal got bigger, then the farmer would put a bigger yoke. And the yoke was weighted on the front so that when the farmer pulled, it would stop the ox. And when the farmer wanted it to go left, all he had to do was pull, right, pull, pull go right, all he had to do was pull right. Go left, all he had to do was pull left. And if the farmer did not want the oaks to go far, all he had to do was tie the, oak, the oaks. Tie down. Tie down. And regardless of what this farm animal wanted to do, he had a yoke on it. And he could not move. So when the Bible talks about the anointing not to break the yoke, but the anointing to do what, church? Destroy the yoke. We need to come to a revelation what that means for our lives, for our families, for our business, for our calling, for our destiny. When Jesus says that he came to destroy that yoke, because a lot of people have been living a Christian life like this. Before you got saved, the devil had his yoke around your neck. When the devil wanted you to go to a bar, all he had to do was pull right. And whether you wanted to or not, you found yourself tipping the cup. Drink, come on, drink with me. You found yourself drinking and tipping. When the devil wanted you to lay around and sleep around, all he had to do was pull the rope. Pull the rope. And you found yourself at Nene's house and Baba's house. You know you don't love them. You know you don't even care for them. But oh my God, in the middle of the night, calling them and telling them how much you love them. And how much you can't live without them. And he had his yoke around us. He had his yoke on us. And you see the thing is this. This yoke represents many situations. For some people, there are people who you will start a business. And today, your business begins to succeed. And you're going on well. And you keep moving. And things are going on well. But the moment the devil sees that you're getting away from his hand, he comes and says, no, no, no. You can't go too far. You can't go too far. And he pulls you back to where you started. And you find yourself at zero again. Some of you are yoked in your business, yoked in your company. You've been trying to break that ceiling. You've been trying to become a $100,000 company, a $1 million company, $10 million company. My brothers and sisters, you don't need more education. What you need is an anointing to walk into that business and declare the oracles of God and manifest the blessing of God. And for some, your yoke is emotional. You get into a relationship and things begin to go well. And the devil is just watching. A few dates and things are going good. And the worst thing is this. 
you know crazy is still in there. You know crazy, crazy ain't left yet. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? You're in a relationship and you know. And maybe for a few months you're going to try hold it back. Like, mm, I, I, I don't want to chase this man. He's a good man. I'm going to control myself. I'm going to hold it together. But you keep walking and that yoke is still on you. It's still on you. Then when that thing is getting real good and you're about to get married, all of a sudden, rah, the devil pulls that yoke and you... Rah, you begin to destroy everything that you worked for. Everything that you built is destroyed. Torn down. Because of the yoke. Because of the yoke. Emotions like fear. Do you know there are people who cannot move beyond their fear? There are people who the devil will let you shout. The devil will let you dance. But let God try to cause you to walk by faith. But you're so afraid you cannot move beyond. Beyond your fears. Beyond your doubts. Beyond the areas that, that you've never, you cannot move into. Areas that you've never walked into. You see one thing about this oak. This yoke is it will keep you on common ground. As long as it's common, I'm okay. But take me to new territory and I'm going to try find my way back to what I consider common. Another yoke is the yoke of religion. I don't mind going to church. This church is nice, it's clean, it's good. Uh -uh. All they do is dance and shout. You, you gotta shout that much in church. You gotta pray that much in church. You gotta, you, 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 what's up with that speaking in tongue stuff? Then your religion from your past, the bondage that didn't even belong to you, it was put on you. The thing that someone put on you continuously restricts you from walking into your calling in God. Nobody has cornered the market on God. There are always going to be things that we do not know and are discovering. So we must be willing to step into new territory. We must be willing to step into new grounds. So religion has kept people yoked. So yoked that you begin to call what is God, you begin to call it sin. Or you begin to call it ungodly. And the worst part about religion is this. There is no one to blame but yourself. Because if you opened the Bible and read it for yourself. You know what the problem with religion is? Religion, someone had to teach you. This requires discipline. Someone had to teach you to be religious. Every Christian, when they get saved, I can tell you the greatest evangelists in this church are people who have been here the shortest amount of time. I've seen it. I've seen it. When someone comes to this church, my God, they're like, where has this church always been? They'll bring their family. They'll bring their loved ones. They'll bring their children, the dog, the cat, the horse, the goldfish. They'll bring everybody to church. Because they know what is here. But get saved and stay a while. All of a sudden you realize, oh, these seats are nice and comfy. Seats, seats are good. Comfortable church. Nice. Ah. And uh, all of a sudden, instead of becoming a contributor, you become a consumer. Pastor, give me my milk. <laughs> that was some good formula today. Someone had to teach us 
to get religious. Religion doesn't just happen. Every born again Christian, the woman at the well, when she met Christ, the first thing she did was go and tell somebody about Christ. The problem with us is we want to muzzle people and teach them our robotic ways because they don't look like us, they don't fit into us. They cannot be amongst us. Do you know one of the biggest questions I get as a pastor? I want to come to your church, but how do people dress at your church? It's the truth. Ask the team in my office. This, this past week, someone said we invited them to church. They said, we don't have church clothes. How do people dress at your church? Can you think about that concept? The place where men and, men and women get life, get spiritually fed, get divine breakthroughs, but people out there are worried about how we dress? Are you kidding me? They're worried about our dress code. Like we have made this thing about the clothes that we wear. Jesus Christ, is this what he died for? Is this what Jesus died for? Huh. Okay. So the yoke. These yokes keep us moving in cycles. The beginning of the year, you make your New Year resolutions. You know exactly where you're going to stop. You know exactly. The devil knows exactly. You can make all the resolutions and all the decrees you want. How about you're going to go to the gym? I'm going to lose 10, 20 pounds this year. You go to the gym for two days. And after that, you're now watching... Jane Fonda on TV. Does Jane Fonda say, you're now watching uh, workout shows. I'll take God seriously this year. I'm going to be serious with God. But you don't change your prayer life. Yoke. Yoke. This is the year that I'm going to start my business. But you don't get disciplined. Yoke. This is the year that my business will, heal, will hit 100 million. But you don't have the discipline it requires for 100 million. Yoke. I want my increase, my income to increase twice as much as I earn now. But you don't even tithe at where you are right now. Yoke. Yoke, 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 yoke. There are certain things in your life, my brothers and sisters, that if you do not let the anointing of God break them off you, you're always going to be going in circles. A life of circles. And you know, this is how the story goes. This is how the story goes. Uh, today you're hot, tomorrow you're cold. Talking about all those things that you could have done, should have done, may have done, or will do. All you've got is stories of what God is going to do through you. But my question to you today is what is God doing through you right now? Yoke. If we examine our lives, church, you'll realize there are certain things that are always stopping you from getting to your next level of breakthrough. So the scripture says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. His yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. For the next few minutes as we come to a close, I want to talk to you about that word, anointing. The word anointing there is a Hebrew word, shemen, S-H-E-M-E-N, broken down into two words, the feminine version and the male version, shemen, in the Hebrew. 
That word means to grow fat. To grow fat. One, two, three, say it with me. To grow fat. That word, shemen, means the same thing that happens to you after you've eaten a good Thanksgiving meal and you try to put your pants on and the pants don't fit. Or in the middle of the year when you promised God you're going to the gym but you didn't and the clothes that were fitting you in January all of a sudden you're now trying to make them fit in March and they just don't fit. Because Shemen has taken place. So the Lord says that he will increase us in the anointing so much that we will get so fat that this yoke that has been removed by Jesus, he came to take away the yoke. When the devil tries to fit it, back in. It just don't fit. He tries to put you back into your bondage of your past, but it just don't fit. The anointing that breaks and destroys the yoke, it just doesn't fit. We need to get to a point if I was you, I'd praise him right there. We need to get to a point in our lives, church, where we mature so much in the word of God, mature so much in the things of God, that when the devil tries us with what he tried us before, it just doesn't fit. Ah, I know you tried me with alcohol before, but alcohol don't fit no more. I know you tried me with laying around before, but that yoke don't fit no more. I know you tried me with anger before, but that don't fit no more. I know you tried me with poverty before, but that don't fit no more. I'm bigger than this. We have to mature in the spirit where we realize that as we grow in God, there are some things that just don't fit no more. Oh, can I preach to somebody in the house today? I said, can I preach to somebody in the house today? Can I talk to you today? There is an anointing that will cause you to be so mature that when the devil comes and tries that nonsense of gossip, you're like, man, gossip don't fit no more. It just can't, you, 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 you can't come at me with that stuff no more because the anointing of God that is on me has caused me to mature and reach a place where the childish things, I left them to the side. I'm now a mature Christian. Paul said it this way. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. But now, I put away childish things mature. So, in your business, in your calling, for that anointing to be destroyed, you have to reach the age of maturity. An anointing takes maturity. The reason why many Christians are cut off is because they haven't matured yet. Because many of us, let me help somebody. Many of us get saved and Jesus takes this yoke of Satan and destroys it and it doesn't fit anymore. We get that? But we remain like this. We remain yokeless. And that is not God's plan for your life. Let me see who's going to get it. God's plan for your life is not for you to be yokeless. God's plan for your life is put down the yoke of Satan and take my yoke upon you. 
I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. You take it up. This one, you're going to have to hold it up. This one, you're going to have to hold it up. He says, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I wonder today in the house if there is somebody who's taking their path and laying it down and taking up the yoke of Jesus Christ. Take your seat. Take up my yoke, for my yoke is easy. What is my yoke? My yoke is walking in holiness. The things that I used to do, I don't do no more. I'm a child of the king. I don't act like that no more. My yoke is easy, talking right. I don't talk like I used to. I don't do things like I used to. When I run my business, I run it with an anointing. When I walk into my into my job I serve like I'm serving unto God because I know my boss is not my job my source God is my source and he's the one who put me on this job and wherever God wants me to go there will I go whatever God wants me to do there will I do because I am his and he is mine and his yoke is easy hey hey so now this yoke is destroyed and now life is sweet and this one the Bible says that Jesus he says greater work shall we do and the thing about Jesus is he doesn't lead his yoke from here Jesus leads his yoke like this he says follow me he says follow me where I go you go what I do you do what you see me do I do I do what the father does and you do what the what I do to the glory and to the honor of the almighty God shout church yeah yeah yes I follow you all the days of my life. Yay! Yay! Yes, Lord! Yes, Holy Ghost! He's not a slave rider. He's a leader. And if you're in this place today, and you're saying, Lord, lead me, I will go. I want you to lift up your hand under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Under the anointing of God. Give me someone to pray with me. Give me someone to pray with me on the mic. If you're in this place and you're saying, Lord, lead me and I will go. I put away the yokes of my past. I'm going to use that one. I put away the yokes of my past. I put away the yokes that this life has tried to lay on me. I lay them down. I lay them down. Come on, church. Open up your mouth and begin to tell the Lord. I put away the yoke of fear. I put away the yoke of bondage. I put away the yoke of oppression. I put away the yoke of doubt. I put away the yoke, the yoke of the fears of my past. I put away the yoke of disappointment. Yoke of disappointment. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. We put away every yoke, God. Every yoke that bound us together, Lord. In the name every of Jesus, Every yoke we put it away. Every, every yoke, yoke God, we put it away. Jesus, Father. Every yoke we put it away. God, we put it away. We put it away. We put it away right now, God. In the name of Jesus, Father. Every yoke, God. Yoke of bondage, Lord. We put it away, God. Yoke put it away, Lord. Put it away. That sickness yoke, must leave your body because you've got a lot to do in God. That spirit of fear must leave because there's too much for you to do in God. Every yoke of bondage must leave your calling, must leave your life, must leave your destiny. The cycles are over. The cycles are over. I declare the cycles are over. The cycles are over. The cycles are over. In the name of Jesus, pray. In the name of Jesus, pray, pray, pray. In the name of Jesus, the cycles are fear, the cycles of bondage, the cycles of sickness, they're over right now. Leave us now. Leave us now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. The yoke has been destroyed. Has been destroyed right now. In the name of Jesus. We take it off. We take it off. We put on the yoke of God. We carry the yoke of because God. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Hallelujah. I want Hallelujah. you to declare. Hallelujah. I want you Hallelujah. to declare. 
Hallelujah. over your own life yes, God. that you are too anointed. God. You are too anointed to be poor, too, too anointed, anointed to be stressed, to be poor. too anointed to be We're fearful. To Declare be it over your own We're life. I am too anointed for this. I am too anointed for this. I am too fat to be fearful. I am too fat to be sick. I am too anointed for this. Yes, God. Hallelujah, God. Too anointed to be fearful. Too anointed. Too anointed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. We you are too alone. We thank I you, Lord. I declare this over your destiny. Yes, I yes, declare Lord. this over your future. Yes, that Lord. you are too anointed yes, to abort the plan of God yes, in your Lord. life. You yes, are too Lord. anointed we to let the plan of God fall to the boy. ground. You will manifest yes, we we were not the calling we of God over your life. Yes, God. We will not abort the plan of our life. Yes, God. We will not abort it. I we feel the Holy Ghost. It. I, am I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. I Hallelujah, feel the Holy Ghost. God. Hallelujah. I feel God. the Holy Ghost. We will not abort the plan. I feel the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Spirit of God in this place. Yes, God. Have your way. I feel the Spirit of God. Yes, God. I feel the Spirit of God. We release the Holy We release the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah, God. Yes, God, we release We release God. Every year, Yes, Lord. Everything yes, that Lord. God has right intended for you. Yes, Lord. We pull it down. Every yoke of poverty. We pull it down. We destroy it today. We destroy it today. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Every yoke of insecurity is yes, broken. God. Every yoke of insecurity is Yes, it's broken. It's Today I stand as the servant of the Lord Jesus it's Christ and declare it's Luke broken. chapter 4, it's verse broken. 19, it's the broken. acceptable ye of the Lord. Yes, I declare Lord. the it's acceptable ye of the Lord. I declare the acceptable ye of the Lord. You are accepted. 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 We accept the Lord. Hallelujah. We are still yes, the Lord. Lord. This is the yes, Lord. Lord. This yes, is the Lord. The Lord. Yes, the Lord. Yes, the Lord. Yes, the Lord. Yes, God. We are it's my year to be accepted. Yes, God. It's my year to be accepted. Lord. Where you are rejected, you, Jesus. you shall Thank be you, Jesus. accepted. Thank Where you, you are rejected, you shall be accepted. And then about shut up. Yes, God. We accept it in the Lord. We accept the Lord. This is the year, Lord. Every hand lifted in this place. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, come on with everything that is in you. Say, Lord Jesus, from today, today is my day. Today is my day. Where every yoke, every yoke, where every yoke, every yoke of bondage, of bondage is broken, it's broken. Every yoke, every yoke of fear, of fear is broken, it's broken. Every yoke, every yoke of sickness, of sickness, of disease, of disease is broken, it's broken. Today, 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 today. The anointing, every anointing, the anointing, every anointing, everything, 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 everything in my life. Life. In my life, and the Lord, and the Lord did not plant. In that plant, today, today, I uproot it. We are put. I uproot it. We are put. I uproot it. We are put. By the anointing, 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 by the anointing. every. Every, every, every destructive, destructive spirit, spirit that's in my life, that's in our life, that causes, that causes me, me to lose, to lose the promise, the promise of God, of God today, today.
today. The destroyer. The destroyer. Is destroyed. Is destroyed. Today. today. The destroyer. The destroyer. Is destroyed. Is destroyed. Today. Today. The destroyer. The destroyer. Is destroyed. Is destroyed. By fire. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yes, ha, yes, God! Yes, God! Hallelujah, God! Yes, 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 God!
I'm here to let you know God's covenant is greater than that. His, his covenant is greater than that. You have been too faithful in the house of God. We've touched tens of thousands of lives because of your giving, because of your faithfulness. Ah, the Spirit of God refuses you to remain poor. The Spirit of God refuses you to remain poor. There must come a time where let God be God and let every other man be a liar. Somebody say, Lord Jesus. Can you hear me out there? Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Every spirit. Every spirit. Of the Assyrian. Of the Assyrian. Every spirit. Every spirit. Of the Moabite. Of the Moabite. That would try. That would try. To resist. To resist. The anointing of God. The anointing of God. Every resisting spirit. Every resisting spirit. That would raise up. That would raise up. Against my calling. Against my calling. Against my destiny. Against my destiny. Against my future. Against my future. Today. Today. The resistance. The resistor is resistant. It's resistant today. Today, the resistor, the resistor is resistant. It's resistant today. Today, the destroyer, the destroyer is destroyed. It's destroyed. The destroyer, the destroyer is destroyed. It's destroyed today. Today, every Assyrian spirit, every Assyrian today. spirit today. Today, every Moabite spirit, every Moabite spirit today. Today, every false god, every false god, every false god, every false god. Every Every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of witchcraft that has raised up, that has raised up against the calling, against the calling of God in my life, of my life today, today by the anointing, by the anointing, we destroy you, 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 we destroy you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Every yoke, every yoke of bondage, a bondage on my neck, on my neck, on my neck, on my neck. Every yoke, every yoke of bondage, a bondage on my neck, on my neck. According to Jeremiah, according to Jeremiah, chapter thirty, chapter forty, verse, chapter thirty, chapter thirty, verse eight, verse eight. Every yoke, every yoke of bondage, a bondage is broken. It's broken. Every spirit, every spirit of Jenis and Jambres, of Jenis and Jambres. Some you, of you are quiet. Please. Thank you, Jesus. Please. Can I help you? If you don't understand it, pray it and go home and read for yourself. Thank you, Jesus. I would not say anything that is not in the Word of God. If there is one thing that I honor, is the Word of God. Amen. Every spirit, every spirit of Janice and Jambres, of Janice and Jambres that resisted, that resisted Moses, Moses. Every spirit, every spirit of Janice and Jambres, and and Jambres that resisted, that resisted the apostles, the apostles. Every spirit, every spirit that would raise up, that would raise up against the calling of God, against the calling against of God, against me walking, against me walking into my possession, into my possession today. Today I kick you off. 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 My feet. My feet are the feet of the gospel of the peace. Of the gospel of peace. My feet. My feet are anointed. Are anointed with the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Every place. Every place that I walk into. That I walk into. I possess. I possess. And every spirit. And every spirit that is not of God. That is not of today, God. Today. Satan. Satan. I put you under my feet. 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 Satan. I give you no space. 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 No space at my job. No space on my job. No space on my business. No space on my business. No space in my calling. No space in my calling. No space in my destiny. No space in my destiny. Hallelujah. You wake up in the morning, you're even afraid to come out of your bed. You can't even walk out of the house. That is a devil. That is a spirit and we must call it what it is. Christians are afraid to manifest their gifts. The spirit of Janice and Jambres. The Bible says it came to Moses and when Moses would do a miracle, that spirit would compete with him and do a miracle. When Paul and the apostles 
would try to do the work of God, the manifested miracles, that spirit would come and try to water them down. You're trying to walk in your anointing and there are spirits that are attached to try and water down what God is doing today by the anointing of God. Yekate, Yebama, every competitive spirit that raises up against the calling of God today, today, the one who answers by fire, let him be God. Let it be God. Every spirit of Baal. Every spirit of Baal. Every spirit of idol worship. Every spirit of idol worship. According to Second Kings. According to Second Kings. Let the God who answers by fire. Let the God who answers by fire. Let it be fire. God. Let it be God. Every spirit of competition. Every spirit of competition. At your job. At our job. At your job. At your job. Everyone who's trying to demote you. Everyone that's trying to demote you. Everyone that's trying to pull you down. Everyone that's trying to put you down. Today. Today. The one who answers by fire. The God that asks Let, Let it be God. 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 Promotion. Promotion. Comes not. It comes not. From the north. The north. The south. The south. The east. The east. And the west. And the west. But promotion. The promotion. Comes from my God. Comes from my God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you feel it? Do you feel God moving in your tomorrow? You can't sleep at night like everything that. Worrying about tomorrow, the devil is alive. There is an anointing that breaks the yoke and causes you to increase supernaturally every hand lifted in this place. Lord, I thank you that this church shall be a free church. Free to move in the Holy Ghost. Lord, let millionaires be born in this church. Lord, let wealth be in our midst. There is an anointing that makes one rich and adds no sorrow. There is a blessing of God that causes us to increase supernaturally and add no sorrow. Every business owner, every career person, Lord, may wealth come from the north, the south, the east, and the west, in the name of Jesus. Every horn that has raised up against your life and against your marriage, today I cancel it with the anointing in my life. Every negative word that you have spoken about your children, your marriage, your calling, Today we cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. Your children shall live to serve God. Your family shall live to serve God. Your future shall serve God. Your destiny shall be established. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. establishment now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Start a ministry, close it. Start a ministry, close it. The devourer is destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name of Jesus. I declare over this church nothing we start shall ever be closed out of time. We shall live every department, every plan, every program to its fullest extent in the name of Jesus. And we shall have leaders who take positions and hold their ranks, hold their positions strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Stretch out your hands in a receiving posture. Stretch out your hands in a receiving posture. If your hands are like this, that means you're throwing it back. This one I want you to keep. If you're lifting up one hand, you're receiving half. Receive everything. say that he's bringing supernatural abundance to this ministry. He's bringing abundance to your life. The one way the church increases is by the people in the church increasing. Father, we release financial increase. The God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills the God who walks on streets of gold. The God of whom the Bible says he owns the treasures of the nations. Now release those treasures into our hands. Release. I see it from the heavens. The Bible says the things that are seen come from the unseen. So receive the unseen now and you will see them in your life. I see the treasures of heaven being poured out into you. The Lord of wonder double. You do your wonders in doubles. Now multiply supernaturally in the mighty name of Jesus. Very softly, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Holy Ghost. Father, let promotions come. Let wealth come. Just keep your hands stretched out to the heavens. I see it happening right now. The God who owns the treasures, who gets coins from the fish's mouth, now get it to us, my God. Supply supernaturally. Lord, the temple of Solomon was built supernaturally. There was supernatural provision. Now cause us to increase supernaturally. Lord, if there is anyone who has robbed you in this anointing, forgive them. Forgive them, Lord. If there is anyone who is not tight, forgive us. Let this be a new day. Let this be a new day. And cause us to increase supernaturally. If you will believe God, I declare to you that the income that you have today shall be your tithe. I'm not talking to you about something I do not know. I have seen it in my own life. The income that you have today shall be your tithe. I declare in this congregation that 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 offerings being given by one person will not be uncommon. It shall be so amongst us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, do it through us. Do it through us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Put your hands together for Jesus.